Hi, in this video, I am going to discuss about uh, a number of uh, checklists that one should follow while uh, doing model validation. So, I will be talking, uh, so whatever I uh, will be talking in this particular video um, are applicable to most of the statistical model. Um, and it, in particular, the uh, financial uh, risk models. Okay, so let's get started. The first checklist that uh, one should follow is uh, one should one should ensure that uh, has there been uh, sufficient uh, literature review. So as a model validator, so as a model validator, one should uh, see that whether the modeler has uh, followed a sufficient or has done sufficient literature review. Okay, and that's an important thing. So, what is literature review? Literature review is nothing but uh, reviewing the re uh, the publications in that particular uh, you know subject. Uh, say, for instance, uh, you are building uh, a probability of default model. Okay, you are building a POD model, probability of default model, uh, or a scorecard application scorecard model, uh, or a loss forecasting model. Okay, so for all these models. There are like a, a number of research publications already done by universities, by professors, by um, you know other companies uh, which are available in the public domain, and there are uh, uh, you know research paper that one can buy. So the modelers should have done sufficient literature review in that particular uh, topic, whether it's POD, scorecard, loss forecasting, or any other model. So that is one important thing that as a model validated, you should ensure that the model developer has done it sufficient. And what is sufficient is something that is subjective. So it depends on the company or the regulators that uh, uh, you know that 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 defines what is sufficient literature review. The second checklist that one should follow is has the modeler referred to the past models. So many times the modeler is building models uh, for which the company or the organization has uh, already uh, models in the in the production. Okay, so the model is simply improving on that model or building a model that is going to be better than the existing model. Hence, it is always good, uh, or as a model validator, one should ensure that the modeler has referred to the past models in that particular uh, subject. So let's say you are uh, the model uh, modeler had built a POD model, then uh, he should have referred to the existing POD model, and uh, based on uh, the existing POD model, he has uh, you know he has used that as a benchmark uh, and built another model which outperforms the uh, existing model or has more advantages or more merits than the uh, existing model. So that is important thing to be ensured. The third checklist is has enough research been made on the model methodology. So there are a number of methodology for a particular model and uh, there are, uh, you know, there is, uh, uh, there is no uh, thumb rule as to which model is uh, the best. For example, uh, for POD model or for any of these scorecard model, there are a number of techniques. One can use logistic regression, one can use uh, a decision tree, decision tree or, uh, or a neural network. And so on. So there, there can be several uh, statistical or machine learning methodology available for a particular type of model. So question is, uh, which model suits your data uh, the best? And uh, there is no rule of thumb as uh, as such. So the researcher has to find out that which model uh, works best for this particular data. Okay. So that research should have been done. The next checklist that should be uh, ensured by the model validator is that has alternative theories been considered. Okay, so if the company or uh, the uh, the modeling team has been follow, has been following a particular type of methodology uh, or a particular type of theory, a statistical theory for for a very long time, let's say for a last five six years, um, has the modeling team given enough thought about the alternative technology or the new technology uh, or the new theories okay uh, new technology uh, or 
because you know uh, with time there are more advanced uh, techniques that are uh, coming up uh, in, in, in the uh, modeling space. So has enough thought or has enough research uh, been done on this particular thing? Okay. So that is one particular checklist that a model validator should, uh, should ensure. All this checklist what we have discussed and what we are discussing should be documented. So this is basically done for model validation document. And whenever one does the model validation and, for, uh, and ensure that all the checklists are, are followed by the model development team, it should be it should be well documented and all the results and outputs should be put in, in the document so that later on if something happens, something goes wrong, it can be referred by. Uh, 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 it can be referred to and also in future development this document will be very handy or very useful. The next checklist is what are the model assumption. Okay, so the model developer should have come up with uh, with the model assumption, so that should be documented. That should have been documented in the model uh, document. Right? Uh, are the model assumptions valid? Okay, so the model developer should have ensured that uh, the model assumptions are valid and they are accurate and uh, approved by the competent authority. Now, as a model validator, one, one should uh, see that whether these assumptions are, uh, are uh, based on the uh, industry-based practices, based on the theoretical appropriateness, based on the expert review, uh, and, and so on. So all these checklists, uh, all these things should be uh, there in the model validation document. The data quality, next one is data quality. Enough research or enough uh, attention should have been given to the data quality checks. Okay, so the data quality checks should have been performed by the model development team. Okay, so that something should be ensured. The next thing is, uh, has the model has the variable selection process documented? Uh, as you know, in model development, you start with a number of variables. Uh, and then you come down to a few number of variables, right? And that should have been documented. Okay, why should you drop a variable? Okay, on what basis do you drop a variable? So that a clear explanation or clear proof for that should have been there in the uh, in the uh, should be there in the model document. So as a model validator, one should ensure that all these points are taken care of. The next checklist that one should follow is has the model developer documented the variable transformation. Many a times you change the variable. You do not have the same variable that you have taken from the database uh, uh, and, and you find it same in the model, uh, actual model, which is not which is not the case most of the times. You come across cases where you have variable transformation that uh, that could be uh, you know binning, binning that means Variables have been uh, categorized, uh, you know, continuous variables have been categ uh, made into categorical variable. There will be cases where uh, dummy variables have been created. So all these definitions have to, should be, uh, transformation definitions should be well documented. Okay. So this is called, uh, you know, variable transformation documentation. Okay. And this is very important because all these transformations have to be perform in the production in the production when the model goes to production all these document all this uh, transformation will have to be made uh, uh, you know uh, while you know producing the production output and that's very important because any discrepancy in the modeling transformation and the production transformation can lead to uh, you know disastrous uh, or catastrophic results and that could be very uh, catastrophic to the uh, to the organization, especially in the banking and financial service organization. This could be a uh, uh, very uh, loss-making thing. It, it, so it should be ex done extremely carefully. So that model uh, documentation should be uh, there in the model document, and as a validator, one should ensure that it is it is there in place. Has the model developer performed back testing? 
that's also important what is back testing back testing is about uh, taking sample of data which is not uh, there in the as part of uh, the uh, model development and test it in a different environment okay so you can have out sample out sample data out time data and so on. out of sample uh, and uh, out of time let's say you have built a model for 2008 you should test your model if it works fine for 2007 2009 and so on so these are out time data that means the data for which you have uh, the data which is not there as part of the model development and out sample that means uh, as you know the best practice is that take 60-70% of the data and then rest 30% as a uh, training data. So you have uh, uh, you know, the test uh, training data and you have the validation data right. So that uh, validation should have been done. Back testing of course is slightly different from that but back testing should be uh, is about finding the performance of uh, your model in uh, different uh, sample which, which uh, sample of data which is not part of the uh, development sample. So that should have been done and well documented and all the performance statistics should be there in the uh, model. How the model developer performed benchmark analysis? Every model has some benchmark. Every model has some benchmark statistics through which you should be uh, the model uh, should, should be uh, should be uh, you know compared. Let, for example, a simple benchmark analysis could be uh, the con C statistics in application scorecard should be greater than 0.5. Right? It cannot be less than 0.5. If it is, then it is totally wrong. If you have more finer benchmark, which could be, you know, let's say your existing model has a confidence or C statistic as 0.75. So the, your next model or your uh, the model that you are building now should be should be having a C-state score of greater than 0.75 and that's mandatory because otherwise it's not performing that well. So that performance benchmark analysis should be done and there is not just one performance analysis there are several performance analysis that is done and it should have been done and well documented in the model. Expert advice many a times for modeling purpose experts in that particular domain uh, are uh, you know consulted okay so expert in the credit risk market risk uh, lm risk interest rate risk uh, liquidity risk and all that uh, are consulted sometimes uh, for their advices so many times what happens is that people take advices and don't document it and then use it and then later on something goes wrong nobody knows who has given that advice and then there is a lack of accountability sometimes that is that has been saying accountability okay so for that to happen expert all expect advices through emails through you know discussions should be documented and should be put in a place so every uh, meet uh, you know uh, minutes of meetings should be well documented somewhere and should be uh, kept in uh, kept in low the next word checklist is the model implementation documented whether the model uh, which is uh, which is there in uh, which is already uh, you know built validated and it is you know uh, approved by the model approval group so every uh, bank has a model approval group right so the model approval group approves the model and once it is approved it goes to the production so whether that model uh, which is about to get uh, go to production um, has an implementation implementation stake the model team modeling team always comes up with this implementation spec which is handed over to the implementation team or the IT team normally because most of these models are uh, you know, implemented in IT uh, environment so IT team will take care of it so modeling specs are given so has the model developer done it okay because so what are the what will it have so let's say you are you know uh, giving a regression model so you should have the uh, all the uh, 
you know estimates okay alpha betas and all that okay say so let's say your the model is something like this so these values okay there should not be any discrepancy with that all estimates should be properly given and most of the times ITM will not be able to uh, able to interpret or understand it properly so it should be written in, in such a language that the IT team uh, is, a, is able to understand it and it and is able to implement it pro properly and and, uh, and and it is well tested so that should have been done next one is uh, whether there is proper model monitoring framework uh, mo model monitoring plan and maintenance plan and that is documented okay. so once the model is there in the production it is important that it is monitored properly it could be a monthly uh, monthly uh, uh, monitoring weekly monitoring uh, you know quarterly monitoring so depending on the portfolio you know if it is a credit card portfolio then you know there is high volatility in that portfolio and then one should ensure that uh, one should ensure that this is you know monitored weekly on a weekly basis whereas mortgage is something that is not that, you know it is not that volatile you know people don't normally default as much what you expect in a credit uh, card portfolio so that is should be uh, you know monitored quarterly or monthly something like that so that strategy should have been done and well documented and passed on to the model monitoring group which runs the model monitor it properly and, and, and provides the output to the uh, respective business team has the has business requirement been documented and this is one very important point that is that's often missed out in the uh, model documented many a times the modeling team miss out on uh, you know, you know <coughs> consulting the uh, business team and it builds the model by it, itself and uh, later on finds that it doesn't meet the uh, business requirement so it's very important that uh, it, uh, the modeling team has uh, consulted the respective business department and uh, taken all the requirements and properly documented all the requirements. In the model document, so there are some checklists which are important for the model document. So in the model document, whether the model output is explained. So whatever output that you get from the model, has it been explained properly? That's very important. Also, it is important that the model validator should check that the regulatory uh, compliances are all met. So whether the model is regulatory compliant, okay, and with the document, the model document is also uh, regulatory compliant. So that's these are important important things to be kept in mind. Model version control is maintained. Okay, every model has different versions, right? And uh, you know, let's say you are building a prepayment model. So there could be prepayment, let's say 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, and so on. So the version control should be maintained pretty much like your code, any code that a developer develop. For every model, one should have a proper uh, model version, uh, and and that should be ensured. And, and this version should be well documented in the model document. The next thing a model validator should ensure that are there model dependencies. And if at all there is dependency, it should be explained properly in the model document. So what happens is that the output from one model, let's say there is model 1 and then there is model 2, the output from model 1 goes as an input to model 2. So if there is some performance issue or quality issue in the output from model 1, that can hamper the output of model 2 drastically if, if there is dependency or if the model output goes as an input to model 2. And some of the model like in the case of asset liability model, uh, management model, ALN model, they heavily depend on a number of models. Okay number of models and if there is some issue in just one model it could create 
disastrous result or bad result in the main model. Okay, so that model dependency should be clearly explained while documenting the model. It should also be explained that uh, if there are what are the consequences if the model assumptions are violated or some violations happens in the model assumptions. Many a times you will come across cases where the model assumption at the time of building the model tend to get violated later point of time and that is a risk because you never know which assumption is going to be uh, you know violated later on. Like in the case of 2008 a number of people assumed that mod uh, the mortgage industry in the uh, United States is, is, is going to be stable, okay? It is going to be uh, as good as 2004, 5, 6, 7 and so on. But it, it, it didn't happen. So that assumption got violated. And people did not quantify it, quantify properly that what could be uh, the uh, loss or what could be the risk that is going to happen if these assumptions are going to be violated. So the consequences should be clearly evaluated, should be quantified and should be, uh, you know, in technical language you can, you can say uh, stress test. So stress testing should have been performed or scenario testing should have been performed. Okay, so the next one is the model development document. This should be, this is, you know, this is without this, a model cannot go to production. Model development documents should be there. Okay. So that should be data definition, clear data definition, data dictionary, data source details, internal, external. And then there is data segmentation, there is data cleaning, sampling. Uh, missing value details. So all these details should be there in the model development document and lot more. In fact, data definition is not just dictionary. It is about explaining every, uh, you know, variable properly in the, in, in the most granular way, in the most granular fashion, every variable should be explained. Every, you know, because any simple difference or discrepancy in the data definition should create real trouble. In future, so that should be well documented. Okay. Um, okay. The next one is data source details. Data source, whether it's internal data, whether it's external data. So this should be, uh, you know, well documented. If you are getting external data, you do not have any control over it. Okay. So one should ensure that the data one is using from external parties. You know, external party could be S and P. Uh, you know, Moody's, the rating agencies, uh, uh, and so on. So, if you are using data from these agencies, one should ensure that the data source details um, are, are, are well checked and it is well documented. Any discrepancy, any uh, qualities you find found in this data should be well documented. Data segmentation. Many times we do not use the entire data. We will do the segmentation. When you do segmentation. When you do segmentation, there should be a basis, right, based on which you do segmentation. And there should, there, there should be a technical reason. Rule. There's business rules. There are business rules and there are uh, statistical techniques. Okay, like decision tree used for segmentation. So all, why a business rule is used? Why a statistical technique is being used? All these things should be documented in the model document and and there is uh, no way you can bypass this so that is should be documented data cleaning okay so data cleaning is a de facto in a, any model development and takes a lot of time lots of time in so data cleaning should be well documented uh, in the uh, model document okay so which variable is dropped, why a particular variable is dropped, if there are missing values, if there are missing values, uh, you know, how they have been imputed, how the imputation of missing values has happened, how the outliers check have been removed, why they have been removed, on what basis they are, they are being categorized as outliers and so on. So all these things should be there in the document 
and it is very important that all these things are Sampling details. Many a times you do not take the entire sample. You take a subset of the sample and then bring them up. If you do that, if you, if you, if you take, if you, if you do that, uh, if you take the subset of a sample and do that, uh, you tend to miss a lot of other observations. The proper sampling should be done and that should be unbiased sampling, right? Unbiased sampling. It cannot be a biased sampling. So that validation should be done by the validator. If the model developer has given enough attention to this. Segmentation strategy and the rationality. I have already discussed this point. Okay, one more point I just missed out is the data lineages. This data lineage documents. Okay. So what happens in the financial service industry, uh, in the banking industry, the data comes from, uh, let's say the data is coming from the trading desk. The data could be coming from, you know, uh, the front desk where, you know, the bank accounts are opened or a particular loan is given out. Okay. So these data could be very erroneous and you, it goes through a lot of you know, transformation, uh, checks and so on. And the actual data would have changed a lot at different stages. So, you know, data could start with, uh, you know, trading desk. Okay, then there will be downstream system, system one, some transformation, system two, some other transformation, system three, some other transformation and so on. Okay, so if you go to the downstream systems, the whole, uh, the, the, the exact data would have changed a lot. Okay. So, if that happens uh, and it is not well documented, then this could be a problem. Okay. Because the, then it will be very difficult to backtrack the actual issue in the data. Because the data quality issue is, is a fact of life and it is, it is always come, uh, faced in the uh, during the time of model validation, model monitoring, production, and so on. So every time it should be, uh, the one should be able to backtrack it to the source. And that document should be there, data lineage. Okay. The next technique that one should see is the detail variable selection criteria. Okay. Uh, or the reduction criteria. So what are the, uh, you know, uh, indexes or what are the criteria used? Okay, the statistical criteria like A, Colmogoros, Miro statistics, Gini index, the binning, the, the way that the, the variables have been. Uh, so all these things should be there in the, uh, in the uh, model validation documents. Otherwise, this could be a problem. Right? Because you will never know in the production that what are the criteria used for what variables, why particular variable has been uh, you know, dropped. Because if a model fails, then there is a significant cost to the company. Okay, if it fails, then it has to be rebuilt and it, it, it creates a lot of time takes and it is under surveillance of the model, uh, the regulators and, and, and creates a lot of this. Right? Mathematical description. So, in every mathematical uh, technique used in, this, in the model the development should be well documented. So the description should be well documented. Diagnostic checks, whatever diagnostic checks uh, are done or performed during the model development should be well documented. And test results should be well documented. The model source code and development data uh, which is used uh, should be also uh, you know, well kept, uh, there should be a version control of the model source code uh, and uh, it should be in the model uh, uh, inventory properly, well documented, where exactly the final model is kept, final specs is kept, there should be a proper version control and uh, well regulated and uh, there should be proper access control also, not everybody should be given access to this particular folder or library or a particular, uh, you know, um, place where all the uh, development uh, specs have been uh, have been kept. 
and also the final development data should be there in place so that you can reproduce the result again and that always is a case a problem case uh, in many industries where the final de development data is missed out many times so that should be well documented well documented uh, that what exact and, and, and should be in a proper place and that should be there in the model of limit where exactly which location the panel development data is there should be there stress testing and scenario testing okay in financial service industry stress testing uh, is about uh, finding out different uh, uh, you know bad scenarios okay bad scenario one of the bad scenario is the recession right recession like scenario if recession happens what will happen to the model output if some consumer behavior change drastically what will happen to the this models okay scenario testing could be this macroeconomic or scenarios like recently there brexit happened right britain uh, came out of the european union so what is going to be the impact to the risk models okay so all these scenarios or macroeconomic scenarios should be should be discussed or should have been discussed in the model document and enough thought has been given the stress testing is, is is a huge area and that should have been performed well documented and so on sensitivity analysis models are sensitive to certain uh, uh, you know shocks okay uh, so every variable uh, every estimate uh, should be uh, should be analyzed for the sensitivity how sensitive is to certain uh, certain events or certain change in the uh, certain change in the uh, values or some delta values and that should be well documented roles and responsibility so who is the model developer okay what is his role is he leaving the company who is the model validator how many people have been in, involved in uh, in sourcing the data how many people are involved in in in, in uh, you know uh, in implementing the model who is the model uh, where where exactly sorry who is the uh, the project manager okay so project manager developer validator uh, model owner then uh, model monitor model implementer okay okay so all these details should be there in the model document all these details should be there and should be well documented so roles and responsibilities should be will be all uh, documented in the model document model risk and limitations every model has some risk okay it could be a theoretical risk theoretical that means a particular model doesn't fit the data but somehow wrongly it has been uh, fit into the uh, scenario it could be uh, the data issue okay the data issue because sometimes uh, the data is thought to be a good quality but it is actually not it could be because of the assumption made it could be uh, because of uh, you know because of uh, there is some uh, statistical issue uh, estimation issue or there could be some human error at the time of building the model so what risk the model itself bring to the uh, scenario build to the business, uh, bring to the business that should be well documented or quantified so the model model risk itself should be sorry quantified and should be well documented and that limitations also should be documented what are the limitations of the model limitations of the model implementation details implementation is, is a big headache for many companies okay because there is cross cross functional involvement in model implementation like uh, you know the business will be involved because that will be the he business will be the end user model team will be involved it team will be so business model it all three are going to be involved and that is a challenging task so uh, keeping a track of all these three things three, three teams is going to be uh, you know very difficult 
um, and and should be uh, so so how how the coordination happens should be well documented. So that should not be key man exposure. If one person knows and he dies or he leaves the company, then it is going to be or he he becomes a he he tends to be uh, he falls sick. So that is going to be that is going to create a lot of problem because nobody uh, nobody knows properly about that particular computational time. Okay. So what exactly is the computational time uh, in running uh, the model in the production? If, if that is huge, then that should be uh, tested and why is it so and all that should be done. Any definition change that is happening in the business side, in the data, should be well documented. If it is happening in future, that should be well documented. User acceptance testing. Okay. This is a standard way of doing it in the IT industry. So user acceptance testing should be done. It should, all the test results should be documented and uh, all, all that should have been documented. So thanks for watching this video and please comment uh, in the comment section what else do you want to watch and please subscribe to our channel um, and please visit uh, our website which is in the description section for you know study packs if you want to learn risk models scorecard development please contact us our email id is there in the uh, description uh, you can write it down also analytics university at gmail.com you can contact us okay thanks for watching and please spread the word please share this video and this channel description uh, link with your friends who wants to learn and please subscribe to the channel thank you